Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today we'll be importing real world hype maps into UE4. I can actually use UE5 for this, there's not actually much difference to the process, but we're gonna use UE4. You're gonna require an account of this website called USGS Earth Explorer, and you're gonna require a free program called TerraSculptor. Now, this is a program created by a person that has done so much for the Unreal Engine community, and this program's actually completely free, but the developer has a Patreon page, so if you can, go support him. I'll also link his YouTube channel down below. Anyway, after you have created an account at USGS Earth Explorer, you can pick any part of the world you'd like to download height maps from. I like this weird part of Nevada, so I think I'm gonna pick it use use map and then you should see you've selected quite a large chunk of map now you're not actually gonna download this huge chunk of map since you can't actually do that you're gonna have to download it in small pieces i'll explain when we get into it then you pick data set then you go down to digital elevation and then you pick srtm um and then you pick srtm void fold then you check the result. Now, there's a lot of results here, and that doesn't make any sense, right? Because I thought we selected a huge block. Well, see, you can only download stuff in a limited amount of blocks. So if you press this button called Show Browse Overlay, you can actually see which block you're downloading. And you'll download that entire block, right? So... I think I'm gonna go for this block here at the side, the first one. Now we're downloading in a resolution of one arc, which is 30 meters per pixel. There's also a free arc, which is 90 meters per pixel. So it's actually lower quality. So if you can, go for the one arc. If you are ready to go and you've found the piece of map you'd like to download, just press download options. And we'll be downloading a bull one arc, because bulls are actually extremely easy to work with. Now this download process might take a while. Um, they actually have to look through the database and get your piece of map. And depending on how many people in the world actually get that piece of map, it could take a while, probably a minute. Well, while it's going, I'll actually explain another method that people commonly use to get terrain. Um, they use Blender, and it's this add-on called Blender GIS which can actually port real-world height maps into Blender and make it a mesh, and can also import a map overlay. But the reason we're not going to use that is because it imports it as a mesh, and it's really not as optimized as using a height map in a landscape for UE. So we're going to skip out on that for now. Now that you have your bull, you'll just have to go to where you download it. It's in my downloads folder. You right-click and extract uh, your zip. Now, you can use 7-zip, WinRAW, doesn't really matter. Now that you have that extractor, you can go and open TerraSculptor. Now, when you start TerraSculptor, you'll see this intro screen. And right, you can just press Import Terrain. Then go to where you downloaded, which would be my download folder. And then you go into the folder. Now, it's going to display blank. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Now, when you go down here at ESRI ASCII, then you just press on that, and then you pick Bull Binary Dem. Now you should see your Bull file, and now you can just open it. Now you'll see it has all the data filled in for you, and that's why I love Bull files. It's just way easier to work with. Anyway, you can just press OK. Now you have your terrain, pretty spiffy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the problem is, right, you can't actually use this yet because of two things. The first fact is not even the image file yet, and the second fact is a, it's a weird resolution. UE actually wants a specific resolution, and it's really weird numbers, actually. So to make our lives a bit easier, we're gonna go to Tools, Settings, just wait. Then we'll go to Dimensions, and then we'll enable UDK Landscape. Now this will make our lives way easier to import an Unreal Engine. So you'll go to Modify, Resample, and this is where this UDK setting comes in. Press the UDK button, and this is all the formats that UD Unreal Engine actually wants. 
Now we're gonna pick 4033 since that's the closest we can get to Yui's standard. So there's gonna be a bit of detail stretching weirdness, but don't worry, we'll fix that all in Yui. You just press OK after resampling, picking the best quality. And though, the terrain did scale up a bit, but we're gonna fix that now. Anyway, go to File, Export Terrain, and then you pick a file format. We're gonna pick PNG because that's really easy to work in Unreal Engine. Then you can call this anything you want. I'm gonna call it Terrain Tutorial. Gonna save it on my desktop because that's really easy to work with. Save. 16-bit grayscale and grayscale is all you really need. You press OK, right? Now you can just open an Unreal Engine. Then you can go to Mode, Landscape, and Import from File. Then you can pick the small block here, and then you can actually pick your terrain. Now, you'll see if we scroll out that this terrain is absolutely massive, but there's something wrong with it. It actually has the wrong scaling. Now, why does it have the wrong scaling? I thought we downloaded real-world data. Well, we actually did. But the problem is, we actually resampled so it could work for UE4. Now, that means we actually changed the size of the physical landscape. And the way we're gonna fix that is by actually messing around with the scaling options. Now, I actually made a graph to explain how we're gonna fix this. So one arc means 30 meters per pixel. That means for 361 by 361 pixels, you times that by 30 to get the real world equivalent. So we resampled our one arc to 4033. So that means 30 meters won't be accurate anymore. The way we're gonna fix this is by taking the original resolution, dividing it by the resampled resolution, and multiplying by the arc meters. So because we have one arc, we chose 30. So if we plop that in the calculator, you'll get this number. Now we're just gonna select the small bit of this, maybe about here. And then gonna copy that. And then we're gonna go to UE4. Uh, and a fun fact about a lot of graphics programs is you can actually go to any number thing and you can just multiply your number with this. So you should just multiply 26,7865 with 100. Now this should scale it up on both the two axes, X and Y, but it's not going to scale it up on the Z because that's not how it usually works. So we're just going to do that as well. I just go in that. Boom. And to make our lives a bit easier, we're going to set up the camera speed to 8 and set up the scaler a bit so we can uh, move around faster. Now we can just go and import. Now this is going to take a bit. Uh, it's quite a big landscape we're importing. Really, really beefy boy, honestly, if you think about it. Now, you'd see this wonderful circle here. Now this is actually the skybox. Yes, the map is bigger than the skybox, that's not even an understatement. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna leave the landscape tab, click on the sky sphere, and then scale it up to something, maybe four, and then four, and then four. Now it should, uh, oh it's not even doing that, we should scale up even bigger, wow. Yeah, we, we ran really overboard with this map. Anyway, yeah, that should cover it. Yeah, that covers it, just barely, but yeah. Now this is our imported landscape. Um, we're actually moving so far out that he even has to hide a bit of it to be performant. So yeah, that that's it. People, here's your imported landscape. There's actually real world data being used. Now, because it's 30 meters per pixel, it will only update visually every 30 meters of real world data. So up close and personal, you're gonna have to do a bit of modification to make it look extremely close to the real world counterpart. But 
if you're doing something like over the air flight sim type thing, this is way more than enough data. And if you just use like a smoothing brush, you can really make this detailed. So experiment with this, just go down the random mountains or something, I don't know man, it's your choice, you can do anything you want, you can download the entire world, load it in UE and probably crash it, but that's not important. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, that's all you really have to do now. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the content, leave a dislike if you didn't, I don't really care. Good night!